Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a tutorial showing you how to build my latest gaming PC build, the Boson. Building the Boson is a great way to learn how to get into building PCs, as it doesn't get much easier than this. Get a decent sized workspace, grab yourself a Phillips screwdriver, and you're ready to jump right in. Start by unscrewing the thumb screws on the back of the case, two on each side. Pop off the rear side panel as well as the one up front, and you'll have full access to the case. It comes with a fair few things already installed and wired like the fans, front panel connectors, as well as the power supply, but we do have to do some prep work before installing the parts. Unwrap the power cable and hardware from inside the case, and inside the bag of hardware, pull out six of these small brass standoffs. These will go in the top two points on the case and the four holes directly below. Just screw them in finger tight until you've got all six in. This is how we'll install the motherboard a bit later on. Before we do though, let's prepare the board. It's inside a static resistant bag, so be gentle when removing it. Try not to touch the actual circuit board if you can, and set it down on top of the motherboard box while we work on it. It can be a bit intimidating, but there are only a few things you need to focus on. In the center, you'll find the gray processor socket, which is where we'll be installing the APU. Off to the side of that are the DIMM slots for installing the RAM. Wedged behind the DIMM slots is the 20 plus 4 pin connector, which is the main power for the motherboard from the power supply. Up in the corner of the board is the 4-pin CPU power connector, which is also connected to the power supply. Right below the processor socket are a pair of SATA ports for connecting hard drives or SSDs. On the bottom right of the board, you'll find a series of small gold pins. These are for wiring up all of the front panel connectors. Last, but definitely not least, is the PCI Express slot, which runs across the middle of the board. This is where you install the graphics card. Now grab your APU, in this case the Athlon 5350. Inside, you'll find the APU itself, as well as the heatsink with fan already installed. Gently take the Athlon out of its plastic, making sure you only handle it by the edges. Around back, you'll see lots of little pins. These are fragile, and bending one is going to cause you a major headache. Come back over to the socket on the motherboard, and pull back the retention arm. If you look closely, there's a small gold arrow on the edge of the APU. This lines up with a matching arrow on the socket to show you which way everything should be aligned. Simply drop the Athlon into the socket. It should rest easily in place without putting any pressure on it. There's not much more to it than that. Just push the retention arm back down until it clicks into place and you've got your APU installed. Next, we've got the heatsink. If you flip it over, you'll see the pre-applied thermal paste. Also included in the box is the mounting hardware, as for this socket, you've got to use a slightly different install method than usual. Slide the pegs through the two holes on each corner of the motherboard socket, and then firmly place the heatsink onto the APU using the pegs as guides. This will spread the thermal paste, so wiggling the heatsink around just a bit isn't a bad idea. Take the other half of the mounting hardware and clip both pieces onto the pegs, making sure the heatsink is properly aligned. Now grab the 4-pin connector from the fan and plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. A notch will only let you plug it in one way. There you go, the APU is ready to go. The next step is installing the RAM, which in this case is a single DIMM of crucial ballistic sport memory. This is simple to do, just look for a notch about two-thirds of the way along the gold pins on the bottom. This lines up with a corresponding notch on the motherboard, just slide it into place until both clips snap and that's it. Before installing the motherboard, you'll need to pop in the I.O. shield that it comes with. Make sure you line this up with the two round ports on top and pop it into place. This can be a bit of a pain, so feel free to use some force to make sure it snaps in. Now it's time to start installing hardware in our case. Flip the case on its side and lower the assembled motherboard onto the standoffs we installed earlier, making sure that the ports line up with the I.O. shield and that all of the standoffs are visible through the screw holes on the board. At this point, go back to the bag of hardware that came with the case and pull out six of these larger screws. It's as simple as lightly screwing the board in one by one, starting on one corner and then going to the opposite corner and working your way around, double checking everything is lined up properly along the way. Once everything is in and looking good, come back around and tighten each screw down to make sure the board is nice and secure. Next up, we've got to install our hard drive. It's simple enough to do for this build. Slide it into one of the free 3.5 inch bays up front until the screw holes line up with the mounts in the case. Using the same type of screws we used to install the motherboard, screw the hard drive in with two screws on each side. Make sure these are fairly tight to keep any vibrations to a minimum. We also need to install our graphics card. This is a low profile single slot card which is super easy to get up and running. Come around to the back of the case and you'll need to pull out the top PCI cover. You'll have to bend it backward to pop it out, so be careful. 
Then just line up the graphics card with the open PCI cover and corresponding slot on the motherboard, giving it just enough pressure to clip into place. Using yet another screw like for the hard drive and motherboard, attach the metal graphics card bracket and you've got everything in the case. Now comes the fun part, wiring. First up, grab the large 20 plus 4 pin lead from the power supply. This goes into the connector on the motherboard behind the memory and can be a bit stiff. Don't be afraid to give it a little force to click it into place. You should also see a 4 plus 4 pin cable. Just pop these apart as we only need a single 4 pin for the build. This goes in on the top left of the motherboard. Again, just push it in until it clicks into place. Next, you should find these long, thin cables which are for powering SATA devices. They're notched on one end, so they only go in one way. Plug one of these into the left connector on your hard drive. Unlike most cables, it won't click into place, so just make sure it's fully seated. Finally, you'll see a couple of these larger Molex cables from the power supply. The front 120mm fan has a normal 3-pin cable, however the motherboard only has two fan headers, so instead connect it using the Molex lead. While we're at it, we can connect the rear fan, which attaches directly to the 4-pin connector on the motherboard. Next up, we have the bundle of cables from the front panel. These aren't difficult, but they can be a bit annoying to deal with. Start with the USB cable, which has a single pin knocked out, to make sure you can't put it in backwards. Plug it into the USB 1 connector on the bottom of the motherboard. Next, grab the cable with the AC97 and HD audio labels. These are for your audio jacks, so ignore the AC97 lead and plug the HD audio in on the bottom left corner of the board. Again, there's a missing pin on the connector, so it only goes in one way. You'll also see a few smaller cables. These are for things like the power button and front LEDs and go into the white connectors on the bottom right of the motherboard, which marks what goes where. It's best to work from the bottom up, keeping in mind that the colored wires are positive and the white wires are negative. Don't worry too much about getting something wrong here. Worst case, you have to double check the connections. Come back to the bag of hardware you got with the case and grab your case speaker. This is optional, but by plugging it in beside your front panel connectors, you'll be able to hear a warning tone if something goes wrong, which can be helpful for troubleshooting problems later on. The last thing we've got to wire up is the hard drive using a SATA data cable that comes with the motherboard. Plug one end into the SATA port on the board. They only go in one way and will click into place. Then run the other end to the hard drive and snap it in. It's as easy as that. Now it's time to fire the boson up and make sure everything works. Plug the power cable into the back of the supply and hit the power button. It should come right to life. If not, double check that the power supply is on and that all of your wiring is correct. You should see all of the fans in the system spinning and video on your monitor. It will likely ask you to insert boot media, just restart the PC and hit the delete key to enter the BIOS. Here, you should see some info on the APU, memory, and clock speeds. If everything looks good here, we're almost done. Turn the boson back off, unplug it, and now it's time to do a little cable management. Grab some cable ties and tidy up as much of the wiring as you can. All that's left now is to install Windows. It's straightforward, but if you need a tutorial, you can check out my 2014 build guide where I go over it along with things like drivers. Congratulations, you've built yourself a gaming computer. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos like this, and I will catch you guys in the next one.